Hey, welcome back. Today's objectives are to investigate the water, carbon, nitrogen, and phosphorus cycles. Let's take a look at the recycling of abiotic nutrients and resources within the biosphere. Please remember that matter can be recycled within and between ecosystems. We have something called a biochemical cycle, and there's many of these cycles. And that's when elements, chemical compounds, and other forms of matter are passed from one organism to another and from one part of the biosphere to another. These biochemical cycles connect biological, geological, and chemical aspects of the biosphere. Let's start off with the water cycle, which should be a review. You've been learning about the water cycle since you've been in about third grade. The water cycle is uh, the changes of water and the way that it is within an area. We have evaporation, we have transpiration, we have condensation, we have runoff, we have all these good things that basically fit together within a cycle. Uh, evaporation is when water changes from liquid to atmospheric gas form, and transpiration is the evaporation of water from plants and uh, leaves within trees. All right, so let's take a look at the picture here. Let's start here with uh, precipitation. Precipitation occurs after air is evaporated and condensed within the atmosphere, and that will cause precipitation. When precipitation hits land, some of it will go into a runoff form into a collection of water, such as a pond or an ocean. Some of the water will go down into the soil and get sucked up by plants and then eventually evaporates um, via process of transpiration from the leaves of the tree and goes up into the atmosphere where it condenses again and then it precipitates, runoff, evaporation, condensation, precipitates. So there's two different ways of evaporation here. You have the evaporation of water within a water source and you have transpiration, which is still evaporation, but it's uh, from the leaves in plants. The other cycles that we're going to look at are nutrient cycles. The food you eat provides energy and chemicals. These are called nutrients, the chemical substance that organisms need to obtain life. So without these nutrients, life would not be able to be obtained. Every living organism needs nutrients to build tissues and carry out the essential life functions. The three different nutrient cycles that we're going to take a look at are the carbon, nitrogen, and phosphorus cycles. All right, the first uh, nutrient cycle that we are going to go through is the carbon cycle, which is the movement of carbon through several types of life processes. You have bi biological, which is photosynthesis within plants, and respiration, which is transfer of gas within any organism. Uh, you have the geochemical, which is erosion. Uh, you have mixed biochemical, which can happen when uh, the carbon is buried. And then, so whether it's the carbon source is something dead or not, it is buried under pressure, and it turns into coal and petroleum, which are fossil fuels. Uh, and then you also have human activities, mining, cutting and burning forests, and burning of fossil fuels. So take a look at this, and we got to show that it's a cycle, so it just keeps going, going, going in a circle or a loop. All right, we have animal respiration. Animals breathe out carbon dioxide, so that takes it into the atmosphere. From the atmosphere, photosynthesis in trees and plants can uh, cause um, carbon to be taken in. Uh, then these plants could be eaten by... Uh, other consumers, uh, such as animals, and then from that, these animals can die, and these decayed organisms can, uh, after those nutrients get broken down, the decayed from the decayed organisms, the tree could suck those back up and use it for growth. Uh, so we have dead organisms and waste, so back into the ground. And when this goes into the ground, we could produce fossil fuels, which humans will. Uh, dig up and then use to do work to provide us uh, with energy, such as moving a steamboat or in a factory. 
and when we burn off those emissions it goes back into the atmosphere so here we have a cycle there's many moving parts we have respiration we have photosynthesis we have things dying things going um, and screening animal waste into the ground and we have fossil fuels being used so it just keeps going in a cycle because it goes from atmospheric it goes to land it goes back up to atmosphere next up is the nitrogen cycle uh, it has all aspects of the um, atmospheric and land just like the carbon cycle the only difference is is the nitrogen cycle highly relies on bacteria so we have atmospheric nitrogen gas that gets taken up by this bacteria that's found in the soil and that bacteria converts the gas in, um, from gas to uh, ammonia the ammonia is picked up by plants which is eaten by animals and once the plants and animals die it goes into the ground um, as ammonia and it gets broken down once again and converted by bacteria in a process called denitrification denitrification turns that ammonium back into uh, nitrogen gas so the cycle starts as gas can uh, nitrogen fixation occurs and that changes the gas into ammonia the ammonia goes through plants and animals and then eventually ends up back into the ground and gets uh, converted back into nitrogen gas in a process called denitrification. Please note that the two uh, bacteria types are different. They're not the same type of bacteria. Two different uh, species of bacteria found in the nitrogen cycle. Once again, you can see that it, it is cyclic because it goes around and around and around and it keeps getting used in different ways. The phosphorus cycle is a little different than the nitrogen and carbon cycles because it's not really found in the atmosphere. Phosphorus is needed to make DNA and RNA. It's not very common in the biosphere. It's usually found in rock, soil, and ocean sediments. Erosion causes phosphorus to be released. So think of heavy rains uh, you know, coming down on rock. Over time, the rock is going to be um, broken down in a process called erosion and phosphorus cycles between land organisms and and the soil uh, phosphate will wash into the bodies of water and be used by aquatic animals as well so if we take a look at the diagram we have a, a land area here and we have animals um, and runoff water um, will carry phosphorus into the aquatic areas and then the aquatic uh, organisms will take up that phosphorus. We have plants that will also use phosphorus because it's a mineral or nutrient that it needs uh, and then the land animals will eat uh, the phosphorus that is found in the plants and then when the animal um, breaks down because of death or when it defecates um, it's going to release phosphate and that runoff water is going to take it back into the water so really it's just a cycle that goes from land to water um, back to land and water through various organisms so once again we could see the cyclic nature of this uh, nutrient cycle here of phosphorus the take-home message here with all these uh, different cycles are that they're cyclic, meaning that they just go from one state to the next to the next to the next, and it, it's in a cyclic motion or a circular motion. Uh, one thing I want you to really focus on is to realize that there is a difference between food webs and food chains. All right? They are chains. They are linear. They pass energy in a linear motion where the nutrient cycles in the water cycle uh, is the opposite of that. They're cyclic. It goes from one state to the next. If you have any questions on this, please bring it to the next class.